We might as well bring this conversation to the microphones here. I just unless Ticketmaster wants to sponsor our podcast network, can we just sort of blast these seventy five dollar fee? What's a, what a ticket fee? A fee? What is the a fee for what? Such and I did a tirade on this yesterday because he had to buy Taylor Swift tickets. Oh God! His, all his grandkids and stuff. He's gonna, be, he's gonna be working for another ten years to pay off those tickets. <laughs> but how do they get? How do they get away with it? How do the feds? I saw a thing from Steve Thompson that, you know, Steve's daughter is paralyzed because she had that accident in the swimming pool years ago. And I did a thing on her. She wanted to go to the gymnastics, right, and get a ticket in a wheelchair. 600 bucks what? for the ticket. 600 bucks for the ticket. $300 service charge. What? How can they do that? How, how does the the federal government let them get away with it? How, how do they Somebody, I guess they are being investigated, but uh, yeah. I, I don't know how, how the hell can they get what what outfit owns this Saudi Arabia? Who owns this? Outfit? <laughs> yeah, it's the live. It's, <laughs> it's the live. It's it's live Ticketmaster. It's unbelievable. Greg, Greg Norman is actually the uh, the chief uh, operating officer for Ticketmaster. It's crazy. So what's, the, what's the get in price for Swifty right now? By the way, it was uh, last week. I don't think I should tell you this, but I'm good at because it's CG. <laughs> Six hundred a pop, forty eight hundred bucks for tickets. Well, that's all. For, well, for Swift, no, he had some some guy he helped him out, so he only had to pay six hundred. That's a that's a great discount based on yeah, what I'm well, seeing. What, what is retail? Two two hundred, two fifty or something. I mean, it's. I, the secondary market is ridiculous. It's thousand bucks or something. Yeah, right? to get like to get in the door. If you want to sit in the twenty fourth row of section three eleven, it's eleven hundred dollars on StubHub before any sort of fees okay. or whatever. Okay, I got a question about this chick. Okay, she ain't good. She ain't. Yeah, she ain't good. I mean, what kind of songs? What she sing? What she sing? Like, uh, we yeah, go ahead and really explain good. what yeah. uh, she sings. She's really poppy. She sings a lot of pop songs. She sings a lot of heartbreak songs, too. A lot, a lot of ladies love T-Swift. And a lot of guys love T-Swift. I love T-Swift. If it wasn't $1,200, I'd be there on Friday and Saturday. I, I think if I was listening to the radio and she sang a song, I wouldn't know who it was. I don't oh, think. You, you, you might. I don't think. Oh, you just turn it. Huh? Thanks. You, probably you would turn it immediately. <laughs> probably would. But, I mean, more power to him, to her. She's doing this whole thing. She's got to come in here and put sixty thousand in there, and and if the retail is what three hundred, two fifty, the real retail. Than, I think it's higher than that, actually. Okay. I, think, I think the initial retail people were still paying like hundreds but of dollars. After she pays everybody off that's traveling with her, she's got to get out of here with five million bucks in two days, right? Oh God, yeah. So, <laughs> someone estimated that like the economic impact of her world tour, if you go like all the hotel and ticket money, it's like a four and a half billion dollar economic boost to the world. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. where, where is she going? Has she gone out for a year or what? She going to be all over for a year? I don't know how long it's, but it's been a while since she's been out. And uh, she also has the crossover because she started off as a country music star mm -hmm. and then crossed over into pop. So she's bringing like Which, all these different types of music it's, listeners. It's modern, yeah, but modern country and pop aren't that far apart anymore, are they? I mean, no, they're pretty close. Pretty close. Just whether you're wearing tight jeans or not, that's about the only problem. And the she, do, she does, she does. from what I've seen, she'll do like seven different outfit changes oh, during really? the three. Okay. And this is like when... So a lot of these, you know, headliners will come out. There's like three opening acts or whatever, and then they'll play yeah. for like an hour and a half. She's going full Bruce Springsteen. She'll do like three hours. I heard that bouncing it's around. It's scheduled for three and a half hours or something. God yeah. almighty. Yeah. Then we could all try to get home afterwards. Good luck to you too, by the way. Six, I think yeah. transit's open though, Pat. I, I, I guess the, the Star Tribune ran an ed editorial that had great impact, and now that they've basically come back and said that they will have the transit system working. Well, I saw it yesterday morning that they were still saying no, but uh, maybe not. Maybe they finally gave up. Maybe they finally caved in. Huh? I mean, it's as we were saying, I think we were saying yes, it's so stupid. I see that every train I see come by has no customers, but we have to run those. Yeah. We, why don't you just say, we're not going to be on, we're not running from 8.30 to 11.30 on this day. 
so we can run at night. Okay. You know, I mean, yeah. if you have to get to work, sorry, figure it out. We, <laughs> right. Yeah. And on a Saturday out of, it, it's, it's Saturday and Sunday, right? It's a weekend. So no, what do you remember the weekend for? Anyway, isn't it Saturday and Sunday? It's Friday, Friday, yeah, Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. And then the gay parade is uh, Sunday too, right? Yeah. Big, it's a big, Williams, big weekend for the Swifties. Big weekend oh, for the Swifties. Downtown's going to be packed. Mm-hmm. Great. The uh, gay fellas like her too, right? Isn't she a big? Is she popular with her? I think Taylor she's Swift. With everyone. Yes, yeah, she, she's about, popular with everyone. Yeah. How about poor Budweiser and Budweiser Light? Now the gay people are pro. Now the gay guys are are protesting Budweiser because they didn't stand their ground. So the, Budweiser's lost everyone. Bud this Light's is getting very da- dangerous. Let's talk about the twins, okay? <laughs> I want to have a. Party in my backyard this year with about 50 people just so I can have nothing there but Bud Light to okay. drink. That's well, right. But just Vigia, surely Vigia, I'm Vigia, out. The human experiment. Would anyone, if it's the only thing that you can drink, yes. will someone Please grab stop. a Bud Light? Bud Light being served, that's all. Don't bring your own. You can't bring your own. You have to drink Bud Light. Bud it's either Bud Light or sand. Sorry. Mm-hmm. So I have uh, they haven't posted it yet because we have a new uh, new uh, system. I guess it's not new; it's trivia. They want uh, they want somebody to uh, after you send it in and just send it to the morning internet letter uh, writers. Somebody else still has to read it. Used to be you could post them yourself, but I I got up this morning at four thirty to do a little tribute to the twins and. Uh, by the time I was done, it was over 1,100 words of hate. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> but it hasn't been posted yet. So I, uh, I don't know what, what we're waiting for here. But uh, un- unbelievable. If you yeah, look they're, back- they're, they're losing ground in the battle for fifth in the American League East here. <laughs> there. Much if you look back at their trades and the things they've done the last three years, uh, Virtually the Sonny Gray trade. Okay, you'd make that trade again for Chase Petty, I guess. Although Chase Petty is now considered their number one pitching prospect uh, in Cincinnati. But none of the others have worked. You know that Taylor Rogers, Taylor Rogers, his last 23 games for the Giants has given up one run yeah, and yeah. he's striking out. He's got 32 strikeouts in 21 innings. Even he has come back from the dead. And not you know we, we endorse some of them i endorse some of them but the thing is i don't have to be right they have to be right right that's the thing well it's hindsight patrick well yeah for you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah they can't they got listen i was looking at the, this operation that they have put together here uh the front office is mammoth, you know. They got all these these geniuses. Did you ever look at their release on their minor league staff? There's got to be 120 people there for coaches. And uh, I mean, they got thousands of these people, and they're they can't develop and they can't trade. They don't develop either. Yeah. What the hell is going on? Well, my favorite one. So we actually, it's funny we. We're thinking alike this week is yet we did a whole episode yesterday. We do our state of the twins on Monday's podcast and we had a whole section devoted to the, some of the garbage trades they've made. The one that takes the cake. I don't know. So there's a lot of talk about Luis arise. Obviously he's back to 400 after another five hit game last night. So he's, he's leading the league in batting average and on base percentage. You know, who's got the second highest on base percentage in the big leagues right now? No. Lamont Wade. Yes, yeah, that's right. I saw that. Yeah, they <laughs> traded. They traded him. They chose Jake Cave over Lamont Wade, and they, they traded him for a middling reliever named Sean Anderson, who pitched four times for the Twins, got shelled and waved in June. Yes, yeah, and you, as you say, they kept Jake Cave instead. In other words, we like strikeouts better than walks. <laughs> that's basically what they were saying. Because yeah. Lamont Wade, at his worst would get you one walk every four bats, right? He, he always was an on-base guy. Plus, he knew what the hell he was doing. It was, uh, it, 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 he didn't even make my cut as far as think my complaints today. But uh, You might want to go edit that thing because he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's, 
Yeah. Maybe online. Just he li- he, he legitimately has a 415 on base percentage, and he's on pace for like 27 homers. <laughs> he popped up and hit a home runs in 21, and then he got he got hurt later that year, and then he he was hurt most of last year, but he came back this year, and he's leading off for 80 percent of the time. And they're but eight or nine games over 500. The Marlins, by the way, are now 11 games over 500. Yeah. Yes. The Marlins. And yep. by the way, today, last night, Louis Rise mentioned in the same sentence with Ty Cobb, the <laughs> only Ty Cobb, the only other guy in since 1900 to have five hits in a 15 game period was Ty Cobb in 1922, and Louis Rice. <laughs> We couldn't wait to get rid of him. And did anybody, as this Julian kid was coming up, did anybody hit, ever hit him a ground ball? Anybody ever I was going yeah. to say. Anybody ever anybody ever say? Is one of the greatest second basemen of all time with the glove compared to this oh, Julian. My God, he's, he's magnificent. He's, uh, you know, he, we talked about it. Somebody hit him a ball. You know, it, 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 put your glove down there and let it hit you in the glove there, uh, Eddie. You know, I mean, it's, it's too bad because he's what you want in a leadoff here. He, he, he's Lamont Wade. He draws walks and he's got a little pump pop once in a while. But unfortunately, can't really play him at second base if he can't catch the ball. So Julian would have gotten killed at the Metrodome. He would have gotten oh. a ball would have killed a ball would have killed him. <laughs> He, he had a ball hit to him last night that, that he o- olayed completely at the Metrodome. He couldn't have gotten out of the way of the ball. It would have taken his head right off. Clean off. When I, went to, when I went over to St. Paul about 10, 11 days ago, because, and and uh, it was when Polanco was going on. Uh, they, they were waiting to say whether Polanco was going to DL. So everybody thought Julian was going to Toronto or wherever they were going. Well, they had him play the doubleheader there, and I only stayed for the first six innings of the first game. And they hit – Dauber was pitching, and Dauber got absolutely slaughtered. And But they hit three balls hard at him, right? But they were – all three plays could have been made. He didn't catch any of them. He only got charged with one ear, but he didn't catch any of them. Yeah. And uh, – you know, Miranda, we were worried about him as a third baseman, a first baseman. He's, a, he's smooth compared to this kid. It's too bad. So, I but, mean, what is, I'm, we're, I'm trying to balance. Okay, so this is bad right now, but yeah. there's still three months to go. I, I, but it's just but it's, it's three years of the same direct, though, just this yeah. middling. And they're trying. To, it's not like they're in a rebuild or a retool. Oh, they're God, trying God. to win. They got a they got a record almost a record payroll. They got a two hundred million dollars shortstop. They got a they spent a lot of money. They, I mean, they gave. Here's another stupid thing. What's your shirt down a tie right now? She, okay, Pablo shows up. Pitch is good for three games. Do we really have to give him eighty million dollars because he pitched good for three games and we traded for him? You know, I mean, I think he's okay, but. He's he doesn't dazzle you, and he and then and then the other thing he does is he's what somebody said I, I think might have been Gleeman or some his last eight walks have been to either an eight or a nine hitter. He walks the guys at the bottom of the order, and then the other team ends up scoring some runs. Yes. Yeah. Hey, another thing, just since we're airing it all out here for fun. Um, I was told by somebody, "Hey, look, take a look at some of the Twins' draft picks, like first, second, third. I mean, they're they're not whiffing on all of them, but go take a look at some of their draft picks What's in the last the few years." That you did want... the, the slugger without a position who hits one hundred and sixty or something. Aaron, so you talking about Sabato? Yeah. Is that you said? Yeah. Yeah. So, did, so he's now, so he's twenty four years old. You know, it's yeah. it's time it's time to go here. So double A now. He's had uh, about 45, 50 games at double A. A, a buck eighty nine, mm-hmm. six home runs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's that, that was the same thing. They get. I think this all started when they spent ninety two million dollars on Donaldson after they, after they hit more home runs than any team in history. I know what we need: power. 
We just hit more home runs than any team in history. Let's sign a 34-year-old guy instead of spending our $92 million on a starting pitcher who wasn't Homer Bailey. Uh, you know, the, the, they had one day, I didn't realize this, they signed Homer Bailey, Richie Hill, Rich Hill, Sergio Romero, or Sergio Romo, and Tyler Clipper. What do we do? We go to St. Martin's old folks home and see who is walking up and down the halls, for God's sake. What the hell? Spend your $92 million on a pitcher. Pat, here's another one. Here's another one. So this is from, this is the 13th overall pick in 2019. This is a, a first round pick, the 13th overall pick by the Twins, Keone Cavaco. He's an infielder out of high school. So he's now 22 years old. All right, it's time to go. We're 22 now. It's time to. He's still in A ball. This is his first season at high A. He's batting a buck 75 with a 254 on base percentage, and he's slugging 290. They never mention him. They never mention him anymore, and he's 13th overall. Yeah. 13th overall pick. <laughs> yeah. I, I uh, you know, I, I just. I don't know. I don't know what the, the things. The first they had, you know, 2019, they went 101 games. The next year, they're 36 and 24, but it's COVID ball. So who the hell knows what it was? And they get, but they, and since then, what have they done right? Not too much. Not too much in the last three years. So it's bad. Can, it's can bad. they please re IL Buxton? He says, I can't take this. Doing great. He okay. said, I saw that uh, we had a quote today. He's feeling yeah. great. I saw but, that too. Has anybody checked him for cataracts? I don't know what the, you know, I, I don't know. He's he's Troy Williamson. He can't see. Send yeah, him to the Nike see. Vision Clinic. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, boy, I, I was uh, wandering around last night. The, the, the grandkids were there. And, uh, so I'm wandering around. Hey, had a fairly good crowd. People don't seem to be in a properly bad mood. I don't think, I don't think the critics go to the games. They don't. We they stay home and complain, and like me. But they, uh, yeah, they, uh, they, it, I, yeah. But but it, eventually, it's it's going to hurt them here. They can't. You can't keep playing. You know what helps them though? Now, the schedule isn't as the schedule is better because you don't have to play. You know, you don't have to play Detroit and Chicago and Kansas City and. You know, you got somebody else to go see him embarrass himself against. So, I yeah, it's well, a so. I mean, Target Field is basically just a giant social event. Mm-hmm. You know, that's by the way. That every time I look at that building across the street, there's two new floors on it. Well, <laughs> oh, no. it's in the clouds. <laughs> Why is that falls over? We all die. It's, it's a, how many floors is that going to be? It's unbelievable. They, they, if they can, well, if they can ever create some demand for tickets again, you're going to have some gonna nice, nice little secondary, uh, like yeah. Wrigley Field. Install yeah. great curtains so so you can pull them tight and don't have to watch that crap. Yeah, but my, I see they got like kind of small balconies on them. Yeah, and I'm not a big heights guy. I, there's no way I could go out there and say. I mean, I'd have to sit like right inside the door or back there in a chair so you couldn't see the game anyway. I'm, I'm not going to go out to the railing in that in that place, for God's sakes. It's so high. It's it's incredible, though. Yeah. I, I don't know. That's, um, you going to be there tonight, Jedley? Yeah, I'm going to try and go. Okay. All right. Let's 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 go, and then we can sit in the back row and, and laugh. Me. Just to meet the hell out of glare and get dagger glares from those who defend the twins. <laughs> it's not it's not Rocco's fault. It's not Derek's fault. Yeah, no, it's fault. nobody's fault. It's just it just is what it is. I would put less uh, blame on Rocco than I would uh, Derek and the boys who are making the decisions. Yeah, that's and, uh, but but we gotta sacrifice somebody. Right. Exactly. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Bobby, you Poppins gotta, is sitting Bobby. right there at home right now. Call him and fire him. You got to call little Poppy in. We're going to call little, this guy is little Poppy. Call in little Poppy and say, you got to go. We don't know if it's your fault, but you got to go. You know? <laughs> He's punchless Poppy. We gotta, punchless Poppy. We got to pretend like, we got to pretend like we're aware of this. You gotta go. Sorry, 
know. Yeah, who is the guy? Who is the big guy with the beard that they uh, fired? That was going to be their hitting coach in AAA, and then uh, he we went out drinking during COVID. <laughs> They've ended up firing the guy. Oh. What was his name? I, he, he, I wanted him to be the pitching coach, a hitting coach. He was a uh, he was this that's big right. gruff guy, but I can't remember. He was a minor. They fired like four guys. Yeah, they, they got because they, they, they were not they drinking all. COVID. How crazy were we in COVID? Just saying. Don't go out drinking in COVID for God's sakes, and you know, find them twelve bucks or something. They're find them a day's meal money or some damn thing. Oh, and very his ass. Very fair. What else is going on, fellas? What right. who else? What's uh, the draft Thursday? We don't now. Remember, remember when we had the NBA drafts here? We didn't have a draft pick. Wasn't that great? And then everybody. So everybody went to boo Joe Prisbilla. Joe Prisbilla when he got yeah. drafted six. So. Even, even when the Timberwolves have the draft, they can turn it in to a complete fiasco, right? They, the the five the three four five thousand people that showed up send a you you get the local he's from Monticello local guy boo they all boo him because he let me go. <laughs> and that, that was that was what year was that they had the draft here. That was in the, the they were still being penalized for Joe Smith, right? It was like two thousand, yeah. Or, or well, why did they say no? Why did they say no? We don't want it. No, we're an we event city. We're an event town. Yeah. We're yeah. not gonna say no to an event. Not that. Not that. I know. Drafts overrated. Yes. Well, it is amazing to me. I've said this before, but the NBA. You think of these millions of basketball players, and once you get past about eight or ten, it's like a complete crapshoot. And they start taking Slovenians that you never heard of. They might turn out to be Jokic or somebody. But uh, it's amazing how fast that the NBA, the NFL can keep you going. Oh, we got this guy in the fifth round. He's, uh, you know, he's a sleeper. He's Stefan Diggs, you know. And uh, and the NBA, it's, you know, you make eight, ten picks, and after that, nobody knows what the hell's going on? Yeah, you're just yeah. hoping for like a guy that can shoot some threes in the corner once in a while. Once you mm-hmm. the ladder, so. you can't trade can't till July seventh, though, right? Well, so, it can't it can't officially consummate a trade until then. But can he be part of a? Can they can they say they drafted this guy? Yeah, and then like I, like I'm pretty sure I don't think the Suns can consummate the trade that they just made until July seventh either. I'm okay. pretty sure. But the other thing is, if the, the Wiggins rule is still in effect, right? If they actually sign the draft choice. Oh, that's uh, that's Tim Connolly calling. Yeah. He's got he's got some off the record scoops no, it's for Falvey. you. It's oh, it's Falvey. Falvey. Oh no, it's Falvey. You read your column. He oh said, no, no. It's the, no, it's the twins. It's the twins. Twitter take police. I don't know. No, got to be my ring. My ring is the traditional one. And somebody, somebody. Okay, I gotta go. I gotta hand it. All right. All right. See you. With that, we'll see you later. Bye. (laughs) By the way, Roycey Unchained, truly unchained today, presented by our friends at Power Lodge and Miller Marine. Boy, if you're looking for some therapy, if uh, you're not getting it at the ballpark and you're looking to quiet your mind, how about a Bennington on one of the 10,000 plus lakes in the state, Judd? So I think the perfect way to now negotiate a ball season clearly gone wrong is if you do want to pay attention to the twins, get on the Bennington, turn on Corey and Danny, right? You don't have to watch the game. You don't have to hear Dick and Justin defend this team. And instead you're on the Bennington enjoying baseball on the water. It's a perfect marriage of throttle therapy. PowerLodge.com and MillerMarine.com.